glasses. They seem to be identical. They're quite different. One glass is half empty. The other glass is half full. Because it's American Thanksgiving and I'm still both American, we're going to have a Thanksgiving sermon this morning. Gratitude. It's uh, been 27 years since my dad uh, passed away, and we're celebrating his birthday still. And I'll call my mom today and talk about uh, our remembrance of my dad. But that's, uh, that's the closest person in my life that, that has passed away. And uh, the closer the person is, the more effect it has on you, right? When somebody who is close to you dies, there is a hole in our hearts. Not the whole heart, but a portion of the heart, right? And sometimes you can actually feel that hole or that emptiness in our heart. And what matters going forward is how we fill that hole in the heart. I didn't know this 27 years ago, right? Would have helped if somebody would have told me that, but this is what they told me at seminary. Nobody talked about grief at seminary. We just talked about the Bible and about the confessions and Martin Luther and the history of Christianity. But this is a very important lesson to learn. The closer we are to a person, the bigger the hole is in our hearts. And what do we fill that with? When my dad died, I couldn't help but fill it with a bit of regret, maybe a little bit of guilt, that I hadn't maybe called him. My dad dropped over dead. He was gone instantaneously. My uh, mom came home from work and there he was on the floor. He was gone. And I know she filled a lot of that hole in her heart with guilt, thinking I should have been there. Why was I still working? Why didn't I call him to see if everything was okay? And uh, that's what we do. And if you fill that hole with regret, guilt, or anger, the grief process is going to become very complicated and very painful. There's another way to fill that hole in our hearts, and that is with gratitude, is to fill it with gratitude, being grateful for the person who has died, how they touched our lives in so many positive ways, how they helped us to become the person that we are today. They gave us the strength, the power, the courage to go on full. And when we fill this hole with gratitude, it changes the whole grief process and it changes our life. Two glasses, one is half empty and one is half full. And we know the people, right? We know the people who carry around the glass that is half empty. And they are the ones who believe the glass is half empty, and I believe that it's going to get more and more empty every day as we go forward. And you know the people who have the glass half full, right? My glass is half full, and tomorrow it's going to be three quarters full, and each day it's going to get more and more until it's absolutely full to overflow. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, the law of attraction. It's uh, very big in a lot of the new age books, the law of attraction. It's uh, whatever you think about, whatever you talk about, uh, that's what you attract into your life. And if you're thinking negative thoughts, if you're thinking glass half empty kinds of thoughts, that's what you're going to attract into your life. And those are the kind of people that you're going to attract into your life. And the reverse is also true. That if you look at life optimistically, and you believe in a God of love, and you believe that this God is constantly pouring blessings down upon us, your heart will be full to overflow. Joy will be overflowing in your hearts. 
The way I see it, the, a metaphor that I see is, uh, is that uh, God is showering these blessings upon us. And it's our attitude, our negativity, our fear that puts up an umbrella. And we walk around life with an umbrella protecting us from the blessings of God. Fear, negativity, narrow-mindedness. These are the things that stop the blessings from showering upon us. The next time it rains, and it's going to be a while, take that umbrella and put it away. And it's a metaphor for you to feel the blessings of God showering down upon you. Okay, just do that for a couple minutes and then go inside. That's the way it is, right? The blessings God is showering down upon us. And all we have to do is believe that these blessings are there. I did a uh, very difficult, uh, challenging funeral a, a while ago and uh, didn't know how I'd get uh, through it. And then the eulogist uh, got up and all they did was talk about the blessings and the positivity and the gratitude that they had in their heart. And the whole congregation felt that change, the change in their heart. And they knew then that this was the way to get through this difficult loss. Not through bitterness or anger or regret or guilt. It's through gratitude. To find those things you are grateful for. And your glass will be full to overflowing. Amen. just want to tell you a brief history about uh, the hymn we sang this morning, Now Thank We All Are Gone, one of my favorite hymns, and the story behind it is even more powerful. It's written by a Lutheran pastor, Martin Rinkhart, in the 1600s in a small town called uh, I. Laban, and uh, uh, 8,000 people died from the plague and from the famine that year, and the other two Lutheran pastors in the, in the town also died. So he had 8,000 funerals, including his wife and a couple of children. And then he panned these words, Now thank we all our God. 
powerful, powerful story. Thank you.